In this video, I'm going to show my Colossal Millipede project, a new scratch belt that I have been working on. Hi guys, well this is a new scratch belt and I decided to build myself a giant colossal millipede. This is part of my cavern project but really is a unit that can be used anywhere uh, and you know it's it is a very big figure and so I suspect there will be a lot of points um, but if we're playing an army with big big units you know an army that allows such uh, big units to be used then this is a really cool mount. Uh, as you can see it has a howdah and that howdah is removable. So basically I'm going to be making a second howdah because this millipede has a lot of room still and uh, you know it's going to be a very cool heavy support unit I think. Especially if the army that I'm using it for has kind of a buggy theme going on right. So to, but this is a unit uh, that I started for my cavern project. So the materials to build this mega millipede. Well, I use uh, toothpicks. Uh, these are very important. I also use some floral wire. There is one of the rear legs that I just built the skeleton for using green stuff. I also need a uh, empty roll of paper towel you know uh, like the roll but it's the thin kind which is very very sturdy it's like very strong it's not easily bent that's the kind of uh, paper towel roll I use and then of course my pliers my cutters lots and lots of coffee very important to have coffee in my bench and of course tin foil both fresh tin foil and washed tin foil recycled and here you see I started doing the body segments on the paper towel roll. So making the body and legs, I use tin foil, which is one of my favorite sculpting materials. And I simply rolled the tin foil, made some uh, plates. Basically, this is the skeleton of the beast. And there's some interesting little trivia. Two legs per segment for a millipede, one leg per segment for a centipede. This is going to be a millipede. Millipedes are also a lot rounder, more cylindrical than uh, centipedes. So I wrap my toothpicks in the foil here and you will see um, usually this has hot glue I guess I was doing this as demonstration but uh, there is hot glue on that toothpick and then just wrap that foil nice and tight go over it with a little more hot glue in order to uh, seal it up and here I'm just uh, measuring the joint by using one of the other legs and just bending that stick. It breaks inside a little bit. And uh, the important thing is that when you bend it like this, um, usually I have wire, floral wire, that wraps around the entire stick and holds that broken joint together. So this way I can bend it and then when I provide the hot glue and tinfoil skin it actually gets very durable. Enough so that it's going to support the weight of this colossal creature. You can see in the background my measuring tools as well. Okay so uh, again you know I, I take I have to make two pairs of these for every segment uh, so there were quite a few legs. I'm just doing another, the finishing up uh, one of the body segments. And what I do is I lay it where I want the legs. Kind of do the, the body plan of the centipede ahead of time. And you can see those two segments, per, two legs per segment. Now this is where the head is going to go of the centipede, millipede. And uh, it has a nice covering of foil. The first segment goes right into the paper tower tool and then I make holes with the sharp tool that you see there, one of my sculpting uh, tools, make sharp holes straight through the other side so I can place the legs. Now here I'm marking the plates and you're going to see the plates in just a minute. The uh, 
Millipede's body plates are made from tin. I cut up tin cans. These are Sprite cans and we drink a lot of Sprite. And uh, people save me the cans. I, I wash them up and then cut them up. And basically these are going to become my body plates. So here I'm just measuring with a marker where those legs are so I can cut up those plates. And this is actually the neck. This piece has foam inside of it and it gets shoved right into the front end. The millipede shape, I mean. The millipede shape, sorry. Haven't had enough coffee this morning, guys. So yeah, you can see there's the uh, rear piece that looks exactly like the neck and then you stick the legs through it and then the front piece which is on the opposite end of course. So attaching the legs to my millipede now is the time when I start I drill in uh, make all those holes that I needed and then attach the legs and as you can see it supports the body quite well. There's two legs in the rear that are very large and that's just uh, the shape you know um, I used some giant millipedes as inspiration real ones actually but uh, I pretty much go my own route I, I it's a fantasy creature so I do whatever I want with it so basically again we went back a bit here is the hole uh, and I, I look at this as an armature the whole armature uh, for the millipede and now I have to add the armor plates which are going to uh, form the back. So this is the time when I add the tin plates and here is the millipede and now it looks like a millipede. So there you can see the shape of the plates and how I use my marker to really uh, pinpoint where the legs are. I also cut the tin a little bit so I can fold it, round it up a bit. Uh, there is the head. And the headpiece was just a triangle piece of uh, very hard tinfoil. And then I put plates over the head to form the head. And the headpiece took about four or five different plates. And there is the uh, head shield which goes over the whole uh, head assembly. And uh, there are some of the pieces, some of the plates are very, very small. You have to be careful with tin not to get cut when you use them. Use tin. So now I have these big tin plates. That was the first layer of plates. And then I cut a bunch of thinner plates and put those over the big tin, foil, uh, tin uh, body plates. So what happens is this helps round the millipede a little bit more so it's not so squarish. With the first uh, row of plates, you know, it's still a little squarish. So these smaller plates that I add to the top round it out a little bit. And so now uh, I make the howdah and the howdah has notches on the bottom the way I made it so that it fits right into a couple of those plates. And then I have these chains that come off. They, they clip right onto the uh, pegs on the howdah and if I want to remove the howdah I can. So I can have this as a single colossal monster or as a uh, heavy support mount in some army. So the howdah comes off. And for goblins, what are the different uses uh, for this creature? Uh, first in a goblin army, and you can see all the chain attachments there. I also added a ladder that I made myself and uh, some bits. There's like quivers in here, shields, uh, there's some uh, weapons that I add later. And I add a couple more shields later. That one kind of uh, bent a little bit because there's green stuff holding those together I didn't use glue for that part and I make a little railing for the uh, howdah out of a uh, plastic now if I want to use it as a ballista mount for whatever army I can this is a, a toy ballista that I had for many years and then I glued this uh, big arrow that I had from an action figure and there you go and there's another view of the ballista so this could be a really heavy artillery piece I can also outfit this with a catapult I have a catapult of about 
the same scale. It was a 172 Roman catapult, 172 scale, and it fits nicely in the howdah, so it can be, it can also load a catapult. Now for my ossified undead for Age of Fantasy, uh, uh, one page rules, perfect mount. So if I want to give my undead army kind of a buggy theme, there you go. And uh, this goes great with the cavalry that I have uh, for uh, skeletons. And this is from the game Rune Wars. And if I got a few of those cavalry pieces, they could like surround the, the millipede and be a really interesting unit. You know, all buggy and stuff, and maybe add some giant spiders and whatever. So, uh, kind of a buggy undead army. I really like, uh, you know, armies that are different. And uh, that was the catapult, by the way. There you go. There's the catapult. All right. So, um, this is the first base coat, and that's what you've been seeing in a lot of the photos. And now I take it to my painting bench with an airbrush and start to really paint this piece because it's not finished. You're seeing only the first base coat. I have a lot of painting to do. Um, and there's some uh, millipede and centipede trivia. I, I worked with invertebrates when I was a biologist uh, for a long time. So I, I have a lot of invertebrate anatomy engraved in me. So there you go, folks. Uh, this was a really cool project. Uh, again, this is a giant monster. I mean, this is colossal. So it uh, would probably be very rare. But uh, I'm going to have a lot of fun with this piece. And we'll see how, how many uses I can give it. You know, um, it'll probably be dwelling in the caves. Also, uh, I have a giant spider coming up and a giant beetle. None of those uh, creatures are going to be as big as the millipede, but uh, well, the spider probably is. It, it is a, a quite a big uh, creature, but definitely not as long, you know, as the millipede. I mean, this is a really big creature when you compare it to the models. All right, thank you for watching, folks. More crazy builds coming, and uh, I do have an Age of Fantasy game that I'll be filming today. Have a good one.